This is an MG ZS, and with prices starting at only £12,495, it's one of the cheapest compact SUVs you can buy. But is it any good? Well, as always, let's find out. As mentioned, the ZS starts from only £12,495. For that price, you'll find yourself in an Explore Spec ZS with the 1.5 litre naturally aspirated engine, and that'll be paired to the 5 speed manual gearbox. Spend another 1550 quid and you'll step up into the Excite model with the same drivetrain. The exclusive model is a further £1,750 on top of that. But what about the car we have sat here? Well, this is an exclusive Trimline ZS. It also has the 1 litre 3 cylinder turbocharged engine that is matched to a 6 speed automatic transmission. Now, this drivetrain configuration is available on both the exclusive and the Excite models for an extra £2,000. On top of that, this one also has the tri coat dynamic red paint, which is a further £695. And overall, that means this car, as it sits here, is £18,490. Uh, that might sound like a lot when compared to the starting price, but actually, this car still undercuts similarly spec competition by quite a lot of money. Uh, personally, I stick with this drivetrain configuration, but I might step down to the Excite model because that's got what I want, and therefore, I'd save £1,750. Quid. Yeah, that's how much this car cost. It is also worth noting that you can now order the extremely well-priced MG ZS EV. This fully electric model will arrive in showrooms in September, and as with all ZS models, it will feature an impressive seven-year warranty. Let's move on from the price, shall we, and move on to the looks. Now, I know I'm not the target audience, and I am wearing shorts, but I happen to think this is a very well-styled and purposeful-looking little SUV. Especially around the front, you've got some nice aggression going on thanks to the front splitter. You've also got some nice daytime running lights in the clusters. And you've got a big MG badge and a big old distinctive grille. So we come down the side, nice alloy wheels, and I think this tri coat dynamic red paint really helps the car pop and stand out. You've also got some chrome detailing, you've got some nice roof racks as well. But one area I don't like is this bit. Like I say, it's not aimed at me, but I think the car just looks a bit tall here, and that's not my favourite bit. But overall, I think this is a very well styled little SUV. Let me know what you think of its looks in the comments below. Now obviously the low starting price is a major selling point for the ZS, but this is also a massively practical car. So as we come around the back, we are greeted by 448 litres worth of boot space, which I think is the most in this class. Now in order to achieve this volume, I think they have lowered the boot floor quite a lot, which means there is a bit of a lip to get heavy things over, but you can bring the boot floor up and that makes getting things in and out a bit easier. Once the floor's up, you can also put the seats down and you've got a fairly flat surface, which is nice. You've also got some netting on the side, which means it's a fairly practical space. And overall, I can't really see a compact SUV needing much more space than is on, that is on offer in the ZS. The back seats in the ZS are also extremely roomy. Apparently, you have around 55mm more shoulder room and 80mm more headroom than the segment average. Uh, these statistics are always a little bit ridiculous, I mean, what does that mean? But as you can see, I'm 5 foot 11 and I had plenty of space. The driver's seat was in my position. You've also got ice fix points back here, and I just want to take this voiceover opportunity to say, uh, sorry for my sweaty face in this next clip, it was 30 odd degrees, I had a cold, and the windows were up, so I was melting. So, what's it like in the front? Well, your practicality carries on, so you've got massive door bins, plenty of pockets for your stuff, as well as a huge glove box. The quality in here on the whole is very good too. So you've got some nice materials up here as well as your trim on the sort of vents. The steering wheel feels really, really nice in the hand, which is important because that's where your hands spend most of their time. I think the trim on the door though could be a bit better. This bit up here feels a bit plasticky, but we'll, we'll gloss over that. So you've got an 8-inch touchscreen in the middle. This is where all of your sort of functions and settings are controlled by is touchscreen. Uh, obviously it's not on now. Uh, and I think this works really well. You've got things like Apple CarPlay, navigation, a rear view camera. And as well as like your car functions like I've just said. I think that's a really nice system. Probably not the most responsive, but I've had no issues with it. You've also got cruise control and air con. And yeah, overall, I think this is just a very nice, well-equipped, practical and comfortable place to spend all the miles. It's future me chiming in again. I just wanted to say that the ZS only has a three-star Euro NCAP score. Now, I assume this is down to a lack of electronic safety systems, such as blind spot monitoring. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, onto the drive. As I mentioned, the car we have here is powered by a 1 litre, 3 cylinder turbocharged engine. This unit produces 110 brake horsepower and 118 pounds feet of torque. 0-60 takes 12.4 seconds and the top speed is 112 miles an hour. So how does the MG ZS drive? 
Well, you'll be glad to know that the overarching impression is a positive one. Uh, me and everybody else who's got into this car have been sort of surprised at just how well this thing drives and how sort of nice it is. I know it's a very bad word to use, but this car is just very easy to live with and I'm not entirely sure what else you'd want for your money, really. So this one is the one litre, as I've said, the turbocharged recent engine and it's paired to the six-speed automatic gearbox. What that means is that you just get into it, put it in drive and off you go. And it is just so easy and I have come to really like this powertrain. I think for this car it seems like the perfect match really. It's only a small engine but it's got more than enough performance. Um, obviously it's not a supercar so you can't expect to get to 60 stupidly fast but as long as you're realistic and know it's a small engine it is more than adequate and it has more than enough poke to get the job done. The gearbox for normal application is absolutely fine as well. Like I say, when you're in traffic and just driving around, I've really come to appreciate the gearbox. What else do I like about how this car drives? Well, you sit quite high. I like that. You know, it's a compact SUV, so I guess if you buy this, you'd like a little bit more height so you can see over things when you've got that. It's also fairly comfortable. You know, the rides, it is okay. It's nicely composed. I do find the back end is a little bit bouncy sometimes. I don't think that's going to be noticed by many people. But that the final bit of finesse for the ride quality isn't quite there just because I find it's a bit bouncy at the rear. I do like the steering. Uh, it might not be something that many people are bothered about, but I feel like the normal mode is really well um, tuned. You can go into the settings and, use, and change it to urban or dynamic. Uh, don't. <laughs> Dynamic's far too heavy and artificial. And urban is the opposite, it's far too light and artificial, so stick it normal and you'll be happy. Um, the steering, it's linked to an okay piece of handling, or oh, the okay piece of handling, what does that mean? The car handles well enough for what it is, as with the performance really, it's a small compact SUV with a one litre engine, so it's not going to stick to the ground like a, a Caterham, but for what it is, I think it handles fairly well, minus the slightly bouncy rear. So what about the negatives then, because there must be something wrong with it. Well, I find this gearbox is a little bit slow to respond sometimes on the country roads. So it's perfectly fine and it does a really good job around town and at slower speeds. But when it comes to the back roads, it will sort of leave you wanting for a lower gear. So like there, for example, we've got into a corner, we've come out of the other side and it hasn't yet changed down. So you then go to accelerate out of the corner and the gearbox then decides to change down. Not the end of the world for most people, but for me, I'd just quite like it to do it for me. So I'd like it to change down before, before we quit out of the corner. There is one way to mitigate this issue though, and that is to, when I just get around this corner, put this gearbox across here into sport. I think that's what the S stands for. And now I've got manual control over the gears. So to go up a gear, I just do forward on the gear stick. And obviously to go down a gear, I just go back on the gear stick. Like I say, this mitigates the issue on the country roads because it means I am now in control of what the gears are. So I can change down when I'm going into a corner and then I'm in the right sort of red band to accelerate out. Now the third issue, or annoyance, I think this one's going to possibly be noticeable for more people. The road noise at sort of motorway speeds is quite intrusive. So I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to hear it on my microphone, but we're doing just, we're doing 50 miles an hour now. And this isn't admittedly the best road surface, but there is quite a lot of road noise coming into the cabin. Not the biggest issue, but something to bear in mind. But don't get me wrong, the overarching impression of this car is that it's an extremely easy car to live with, and for most people, I think that's going to be what they notice just how easy it is to get in, go to drive, and just go. And it does, does it all for you. Automatic gearbox is bliss, the little engine has got more than enough power, and it just goes about the job of being a car extremely well. So to summarise then, I think the MGZS does more than just offer great value for money. It's good to look at, it drives well, it's comfortable, it's practical and it is very well equipped. I've really enjoyed my time with this car and I think if you're thinking of buying one, go out and have a look, you won't be disappointed. I've been Blee, thank you for watching and please subscribe. Right, I wish I could just leave the review there, but unfortunately, on my last evening with the ZS, its aircon decided to relieve itself all over the road. Now, it's not the end of the world, and I'm sure it's just one of those things, but I felt I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't mention it.